Um, I've got another pair targeted question, so I'll start with healthy kids first, with the, the one targeted to them. Um, what gives you the right to decide what I should put in my body based on your beliefs? I'm going to take the first five seconds to, to say that Corvallis also has been fluoridated for decades. And when you have fluoridation, it cuts Medicaid costs by half. So you can actually cover twice as many Medicaid um, patients. Well, you know, the ethics of water fluoridation, I think, are, are, are pretty significant. First of all, when you have a safe public health measure like water fluoridation, it is highly ethical to say that you're going to use this as a way of trying to help underserved, low-income, and communities of color who do not have access to these benefits. And so it is helping reduce disparities. And that is highly ethical. Now, on the issue of choice, choice is wonderful when you are white, affluent, and you have a whole series of choices available to you. But there are many people, including people in communities of color, who don't have choice right now. And so choice is kind of in the eye of the beholder. And I think it's a challenge to those of us who promote choice to really look at who has choice and who does not have choice? We did not answer the question. I'd also say that we do have the choice as voters uh, here on, on May 21st. And, and personally, I feel like it's time to make the community choice. And I want to add to that. I want to add to uh, that, actually. There is a, a micron anthropology population that <coughs> people are not going to be going to the polling on May 21st because they are not citizens. And I think it's a question of what we have to ask ourselves as a board is what value are we putting out there when we say no to them? You are being asked to vote on your values this election day. Do you value not having chemicals in your water? Um, do you think that there are better alternatives based on information that's readily available? Uh, you, you do have a choice. Um, we, and these conversations never talk about the impact on animals, the impact on food, the impact on uh, uh, on a whole ho on, on seniors and on babies. When we talk about this, we talk about it as if we are a monolithic population. But if you know someone, or if you suffer from health issues, if you know someone who has young children, if you know uh, seniors, you would be concerned, I think, with adding additional chemicals. We are bombarded with chemicals all day, every day. Fluoridation is not something that we should consider when there are cost-effective alternatives readily available, readily proven. The only thing that stands in the way of all kids having a dentist is our political leadership. How much time is left? Well, I want 30 seconds. Um, just to comment also, and to be very clear, the effectiveness data for low-income children or most vulnerable is not showing that this policy is working. 25% is not one out of four teeth. It's about half a cavity in the entire mouth. The largest population study ever done, funded by taxpayer dollars by, by our federal government, this is important to note because that's not how it's framed. We have better alternatives. We can do this in Portland. They're doing it in Seattle. We can do it here right now. There is a reasonable basis for concern, and the data is not showing in city after city for low-income kids that is helping. Okay, 30 seconds. Be direct. So I, I want to come back to a, a, a general little framework here. And people, some people may have already heard this before. We could divide this group into yo-yos and wit. Yo-yo stands for, you're on your own. Wit stands for, we're in this together. <laughs> this is a basic framework that describes this whole debate. You know, individual, it's all about me, 
versus community benefit? Okay. Well, I want to be clear. If you at any time got that impression, you were it was a wrong impression. Uh, I have a long history of working for justice in this community. I have always worked uh, for equity and justice in this community. Um, I'm here because I believe that this is the wrong measure at the wrong time for the wrong community. That's why I'm here, and I'm really offended that you would do what you did, but it's all good. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, this is uh, for clean water. This is a directed question. Uh, why do people say fluoride is bad when it's already in the food? Well, I, I, I don't think I've said that fluoride is bad. Uh, fluoride is everywhere. It's in our toothpaste. It's in food. Um, what I said was, I personally don't want it in our water, and I haven't had a good reason to put it in the water. Uh, adding a uh, adding these chemicals to our water uh, for a medicine uh, to treat a very, very small population is not an effective thing to do, in my opinion. And so... And we already are exposed too much. It is everywhere, and the benefit is topical, not when swallowed. The effectiveness data is not there. Why do you think local groups like the Sierra Club and NAACP and Food and Water Watch and the DEQ Union don't support water fluoridation? If I saw that it was effective in the data, and I've read the data for about 10 years, I would potentially support this. The data does not indicate the benefit that they're proclaiming it does. The science shows a real risk. There's not consensus. Individuals with thyroid disease, diabetes, and kidney disease, and infant formula cannot take it in. It harms them. It polarizes our community. We can do that. <coughs> do we get a 30 second? You have two minutes. Oh, two minutes. I just wanted to start by just saying that um, every trusted major health organization disagrees with what Kelly just said. This is an extremely effective measure. Water fluoridation cuts decay, decay by at least 25%. The CDC actually says 25 to 40%. That's a dramatic reduction um, across the board for the entire population. Um, it decreases severe, um, severe procedures by two thirds, and there's lots and lots of research supporting that. And um, it's just for And you know, I, I think you all get the sense that this is extremely confusing because we're both <laughs> talking about the science. In many cases, we all seem to be pointing to the very same studies, and we're basically saying different things. So, as I said before, the Willamette Week, the Portland Tribune, the Portland Mercury, the Oregonian, who had no skin in this game, Money, 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 money. It doesn't matter to them money. how this argument comes out. They have heard <coughs> essentially this panel and others in exactly the same kind of a debate before their editorial boards with exactly the same comments. And with all of that information, they still come down on supporting water fluoridation. And they have nothing to gain by it. Except money. How much time do you have? 14 seconds. Um, all right, let's just, if, let's talk about the direction opening up. Okay, we're going to redirect. 30 seconds to the feedback. Just again to say, science changes before policy. Our local media organizations, I encourage you to watch the Willamette Week endorsement panel. I was there. Their language has tempered. We knew they were going to endorse the policy. They have skin in the game. It looks bad when people suggest you're against low-income children to be against water fluoridation. And also, if you look at advertisement, there is bias. We've been outfunded three to one for a grassroots campaign. It's difficult to message when you don't have the access to the media. Watch that link and look at the debate and make your decisions. <laughs>